Good morning. In the last video, I posted that we had a, a breakdown and had to tow the bug back home. Um, wanted to give a quick update here. This is probably going to be a two or three part thing in just giving uh, updates on what, what needs to be done and actually doing what needs to be done. Um, so, posted on uh, some Facebook groups, through some pictures, I said, hey, I'm having vapor lock issues. What do you guys think I need to do? Um, I'll start with uh, the, the less dramatic things first and then get to the, 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 the bigger um, issues. And I've got a bunch of parts on order, so you know, within the next week or two, I'll be posting some some repair videos uh, to, to go along with this. So initially, when I originally got the car, this this uh, part of the fan shroud was open. This part of the fan shroud was open. There were open holes down here, and I'll I'll kind of go into what that was, what it's supposed to be, that kind of thing for anybody who's not super familiar. Um, I've had to do a lot of research and a lot of listening and asking questions and figuring out what this is supposed to look like. Um, these bugs did not have electrical heat, so they kind of had mechanical heat um, for, for warming the cabin in the winter time. There's a fan shroud back here, on either side is here. Um, that pulls hot air off of the motor. And um, historically, there would be a hose that connected here, down through here, and then through some heat channels that ran under the car up to the cab, and you could open a, open a switch to pull that hot air into the cabin. Um, so this, there was a hose here at some point, there was a hose here at some point, um, what was told to me when I posted my original picture without all of those changes uh, is you're, you're pulling hot air off the motor and dumping it out into the engine compartment and then it's getting sucked back up into the intake. So you're potentially overheating your motor that way. Um, <clears throat> so the suggestion was made, you gotta plug these off. If you don't still have the, um, the heat channel um, equipment, um, which unfortunately I don't. Um, if if anybody installs aftermarket exhaust in these cars, usually they remove a bunch of components that are required for that feature. So I don't have that. Um, <laughs> the suggestion was made, baby food jars, sheet metal, and somebody mentioned Red Bull cans, and I'm like, ha, that's hilarious, that's what we're doing. So I just put some plumbing clamps <laughs> on there. For now, um, I've I had ordered some freeze plugs, but they're a little bit too big to go into that into that hole. I probably will still do that to make this a little cleaner, but I want to leave the Red Bull cans on there for now because it's funny. Uh, this you know this hole here that's plugged, and this hole here that's plugged is where that hose was supposed to connect, right? Um, I've got. Mason jar lid, another one on the underside, uh, two washers, a bolt and a wing nut. Holding those on, they're pretty tight. I think that'll work for now. That red thing is the freeze plug that I originally ordered for, for this. I had ordered two of them. It's a tiny bit too big for that, but fits right into that hole just fine. And that hole actually is historically was supposed to connect a hose from the bottom of the intake down to under the car. Um, it was explained to me that that pulls warm water, warm, warm water, warm air from outside the engine compartment um, for when it's cold outside to help pull warmer air into the intake to, to warm the engine faster. Um, not really necessary in, in our climate here, so that was left off at some point, and I went ahead and capped that. Um, and then there's a, there was another random hole back there. I just used 
two fat washers and a, uh, a screw and a, and a wing nut to attach that. So, yeah, so that, that was the first part of the suggestions that were made to eliminate as much heat as possible um, from the engine compartment. Um, the, the responders said that the engine compartment is supposed to be as sealed as possible. So sealing up those open holes in the bottom prevented excess um, radiant heat from the exhaust from being pulled up into the engine compartment. Cool, makes sense. Um, it also suggested um, moving this fuel line, because right now the fuel line touches the engine compartment tin and they said it can pull heat off of that engine compartment tin and cause the the, um, the temperature of the fuel to increase, thus causing vapor lock. So that's something that I'll plan on addressing. So the, the bigger issue is, I believe this fuel pump here, um, I had a couple of people respond and say, ew, what is that UFO looking piece of crap that you have on there? <laughs> I'm like, I don't know, man. Um, from doing a little bit of research, it looks like this was replaced at some point. Um, it's not the original fuel pump. Um, and for for those who aren't super, um, uh, you know, researched on VWs, um, this was a, or is a mechanical fuel pump. Um, not electrical. So as the, the oil pressure changes in the motor, um, there's, a, there's a little rod up in here that takes advantage of the, the change in oil pressure to move up and down inside this, uh, this fuel pump. Um, and that causes a, a siphon to allow fuel to be pulled from the gas tank all the way up to the front of the car through this hose here, through the filter, up into the top of the pump, and then out this other hose here that leads up into the carburetor. Um, so quick thing, when I, when I did an oil change Saturday, I smelled fuel in the oil. Um, one of the things that can happen with, with these um, fuel pumps is the, the diaphragm in there, if that gets any kind of leakage, it just starts dumping fuel down to the motor. So it mixes in with your oil. So that the smell of fuel when I when I dump the oil is indicative that that's, that's probably what that situation is. And also that's going to cause issues with your motor not being able to start properly. Um, you know, after, after I changed the oil out, car started right up with no problem, ran for a couple minutes and then died. So the vapor lock issue is still, still occurring. Um, what I'm going to do is delete this. Um, I bought a cap that, that goes over this, this connection here and bolts down. I'm going to rerun the, um, the fuel lines and I'm going to throw, um, an electrical, um, fuel pump up near the gas tank and put a fuel pressure regulator in here with the gauge on it. Um, to make sure I'm able to dial it down to, like I said, what is it, two and a half, 2.5, 2.6 PSI, something like that. And I'll, I'll verify that before I do it. Um, and then I'm going to put a switch on it as well so I can turn it on and off from inside the, the car in case there's some issue where it's, it's uh, pushing fuel and I don't want it to. Um, so that's what's coming up. I've got all the parts ordered for that. They're, they're, they're coming. Should be here within two days from now so well somewhere between two days and six days so <laughs> it's either going to get done this weekend or not until next weekend uh, but whatever parts come in it, if it's something I can do now um, I will and I'll throw a video up but yeah that's uh, that's the situation um, should be interesting glad to catch it now before it caused major issues, you know, dumping fuel down into your, your, um, oil is a, a, a bad situation. So cool. I'll keep you posted. Have a good day, everybody.